Hello and welcome to LearnPythonTutorial.com and we're going to build our very first program with Python. Um, this is going in parallel with our addition tutorial we just did and we're just going to show you how to build a simple uh, Python program. Some of the stuff you haven't covered but uh, you know just a quick introduction to it. We'll show you how to build a program, how to run it from the command line and it, it will give you some experience and we're going to do this along the way. I didn't script this, I didn't practice this, I didn't write the code beforehand, so when I make mistakes doing this, you'll see how to troubleshoot things. And we're going to do that with all our programs. Um, just to show you how it's done, how it works behind the scenes. So, first thing I want to do is open my text editor. Yeah, text editor, uh, I use Sublime Text 3. So let's go ahead and save it. Command S. And I'm going to save it to my text, desktop edition.py. .py is a Python file, so we want to save it as .by so it knows to run that code. Hit return, and we got that saved. First thing I want to do is make a print statement and welcoming the user to our new program. Say welcome to our addition program. All right, go ahead and save that. Command S or Control S, and let's run it. So the first thing I need to do is open my terminal, and I need to go to my desktop. So I'm going to hit ls. My desktop's in this directory, so I'm going to do cd desktop. Oops, I didn't spell desktop right. cd desktop. Hit return. Now I'm in my desktop. Now I want to do ls, and I see my addition.py. We'll go ahead and run that file, python3, addition.py. So what we're doing is saying, Python 3, please run this file, addition.py. Hit return. And we get, welcome to our addition program. So it ran that print statement. Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to clear that real quick. I'm just going to clear, clear screen so you guys can see better. There's not so much junk on there. Next thing we need to do is get the user's input. And we're going to say, we're going to save this to, a, or have a variable point to the object that the user gives us. So let's go first num. That will be our first variable. And we're going to say uh, input. And this is how we get users um, input via the command line. So we'll do input give us your give us your first number. Period space. I add a space to give it a little space when the user adds their number in. So we'll go ahead and save that, and then we'll run it again from our command line. If you press up, it brings up your last command. Hit return, and it runs it, and it says, give me your first number. And this is why I added space, so it's not up against the dot here. I'm going to say 2. Hit return. Nothing happens because we don't tell it to do anything in our program. So now we need a second number. Let's do second num equal input. We're going to do the same thing we did above. And we're going to say, give us your second number, period, space. We'll save that. Now we're going to be able to get users two numbers. Here's your first number, one. Second number, two. Nothing happens because now we have, now we're getting the user's input. And what we're doing is we're pointing that the user gives us input, a value which creates an object, and then we point our variable to that object. So the first one we're pointing first num to, second one we're pointing second num to. So let's go ahead and um, we need the sum. We need the sum of the two numbers, and we need to save that to a variable. So to do that, let's do the sum. I can't use sum because that is a building keyword. And I'm going to add our first variable plus our second variables, second num, first num, we're going to add them together, and we're going to point, we're going to create a new object, new value, and we're going to point this variable to that. So we'll go ahead and save that. Now, we can run it again, but nothing's going to happen. We'll go to first num, second num. Now nothing happens because there's no, we don't print or return anything to the screen. So let's go ahead and print the sum to the screen. So I'm going to use a print statement again, and we're going to say your sum is, 
and we're gonna do curly braces. Then we're gonna go on the other side of the quote here and uh, put a period and put format and uh, parentheses and then we're gonna put the sum. All right, I'm gonna save it. Now what we did here is we made a print statement, okay? And then we made a string that says your sum is and then we got curly braces. Whatever we put in this method here, format method, we put our new object within that, it's gonna put it in here, in these curly braces. We can't put format, like we can't put our uh, sum in there, like if we just called our variable there, because it's just gonna print the sum because it's in in um, a string. So we have to, we need to use another way to do it. So we use format, and then format inserts whatever we put in here into the curly braces. So go ahead and save that. Now let's run this again. This is our, you know, this is the end of our program. We're gonna see, test it out again. Let's do one plus two, and you get your sum is 12. But that's not correct. Oh, we need to put it. Uh, what it did here was concatenate it. I didn't realize that I didn't put integer. We need to tell it, it needs to be an integer. And I put your num is 12. What it did was it concatenated our two strings. It created one and two as strings. See, this is why we show you without practicing. Int is integer. And it says treat this as an integer. Put a parentheses out there. And yeah, parentheses. And then do a second one, same thing on the second line. Int. I knew we were forgetting something. Go ahead and save it. Now let's run it. I hope, um, I want you guys to understand what happened. <clears throat> we took a user's input. The program treat, treated it as a string. So what it did was concatenate it. We haven't talked about concatenate it. But if you take a string of the number one and a string of number two and you add them together, you get a string and it says 12. So there you go. You just learned from trial and error. And this is how you'll be doing all your programming. You're going to write a program, think it's going to work, and then it doesn't because you forgot one little thing. So let's go ahead and run this again. It will work this time. So give us a number. One, then hit enter, and two, and you get the sum mystery. See? There we go. See, uh, you run your programs when you build them, and you test them. So what happens if we do 7.6? We're going to get an error because you can't do 7.6 and put it in an integer. Oh, well, i got to run the program first, so let me clear this so you guys can see it better. Press up. <clears throat> well, press up twice. Run it again. 7.6. What happens here is it's saying 7.6 is not an integer. We cannot save it. Okay? Now, we're not going to go into it in this program. Our next program, we're going to show you. Uh, probably, most likely, we're going to use subtraction this time. But we're going to show you how to take a floating point number or an integer and make it work. So, see you in the next tutorial. Mess around with this a little bit. Just remember, floating point numbers are not going to work in this program because that's not how we set it up. It should be an integer. So let's take one more look. Let's run our program again. Give us another five, seven. We get twelve. All right. If you do floating point numbers, it's not going to work because we we put in um, integer. The number needs to be an integer, but we can work around that <clears throat> um, with some coding. But we'll do that in the next one because we're going to do one on subtraction. And then we'll be able to take integers and floats because we'll add some more code to it. So we'll see you in the next one.